So this is going to be my comprehensive troubleshooting guide for using MIDI clock, starting with what to do when you're trying MIDI clock and it seems like nothing is happening at all. The first thing you need to know before wasting any time is that MIDI clock and all the messages that are related to it have nothing to do with setting the correct MIDI channel. You can spend quite a lot of time barking up the wrong tree with this one, so just don't. Some devices require you to set a parameter that instructs them to recognize and follow MIDI clock. If your device has one, then make sure it's on. If you have several pieces of gear strung together in a MIDI daisy chain, which is the default MIDI way, then be sure that the devices in the middle are using MIDI through ports or have MIDI through enabled on their out port. There are two different types of MIDI through and you'll want to know the differences between them because that can matter. The first type is a dedicated port labeled through on the device. If the device has this port, then it's there to repeat any messages that it receives on the end port, and it has no interaction with the device's microprocessor. It's just a basic electrical split of the signal and doesn't have any controls in the software to configure it. It'll work like any other splitter just by plugging in. The second type of through is what's known as a soft through. The MIDI out port becomes the through, and this feature usually needs to be turned on in the software, so check for a parameter like that in the device and make sure through is enabled. One quick way of diagnosing an issue with through is to change the order the devices are hooked up in. If the device that's having trouble is near the end of the MIDI daisy chain, put it right after the device that's generating clock instead, and see if it suddenly begins working. A common misconception at first is that MIDI clock is always started by the MIDI start command. That's actually not always the case. In fact, the MIDI spec doesn't lay it out this way at all. The MIDI start command is there as a command just to hit start buttons remotely. This becomes a gray area because there are master clock devices that intrinsically tie the sending of MIDI start and the sending of MIDI clock together. So you'll want to know how each device treats this. Using this dedicated MIDI clock device, I'll show you what I mean. I have it configured so that it'll send MIDI clock without sending MIDI start. This device also plays an audio click while the clock is running. The synthesizer is receiving MIDI clock right now, but the sequence hasn't been started. I can go ahead and press start on the synth and it starts up and stays in sync. Or if I stop everything, including the clock, now when I press the start button on the synth, it appears to do nothing. This is because based on the settings, it is waiting for the first clock pulse to go on. But if I reprogram this MIDI clock device so that both clock and start are tied together, you can see the behavior that many expect. Everything starts at once. Sometimes you just have to figure out each device's own way of implementing clock and start commands. If none of that gets you going, be sure to try other cables. It's one of those troubleshooting steps that's so easy to overlook. Now let's talk about a situation where MIDI clock is being sent and received, but the devices still aren't staying in sync with each other. I've already discussed MIDI through and how it could be either a dedicated through port or a soft through port on the MIDI out. I didn't say how these two types can affect the signal itself, and that is an important area to cover. With a dedicated through, there's actually no effect on the signal. It's only an electrical connection that instantly transfers whatever signals are seen by the MIDI in. However, soft through, that's where it uses the MIDI out, is where problems with timing can arise. A soft through is the same thing as merging two signals. The signals coming in and a signal sent by the device itself are being merged at the output. For MIDI, merging requires a microprocessor that keeps the messages in order. The downside to merging is that messages must be moved around slightly in time to accommodate all the messages that are being merged. Microprocessors also run code and the work they do happens in cycles, which adds a little time. The movement of messages is known as jitter, and the additional time is known as latency. And usually we're talking about amounts that are undetectable by human perception. However, the more devices that are daisy chained together, the more merging that's taking place, the more the jitter and latency adds up until it can be very easily noticed. 
With MIDI in general, my experience is six or seven merges is the point where issues can become noticeable, and for MIDI clock specifically, even sooner. The end result with jitter and latency is that devices can fall out of sync because they're not receiving clock messages consistently. Given what I've described about merging, the thing that most people do to solve it is to add a MIDI through or splitter of some kind. Of course, the ability to do this depends overall on which devices need to send messages to which other devices. It's not always practical to connect all your devices up in this sort of hub and spoke fashion, but if you can identify places where adding a splitter makes the most sense, sometimes eliminating just one merge makes all the difference. Now, if you go out into forums and talk about sync problems that you're having, and you're using MIDI clock over a USB connection, you're definitely going to hear from others that you shouldn't do that. One moment your project sync can be working fine, and then you add one more track or one more effect, and the ability to sync over USB is lost. There's always a tipping point that's waiting in every project. And the last thing I'll leave you with is one of the reasons some people choose to acquire a dedicated MIDI clock device. Even though lots of sequencers and drum machines can send MIDI clock to other devices, they don't always allow you to use the workflow you have in mind. Uh, for instance, you could have a machine that only sends MIDI clock when it's running a sequence, but there may be times when you don't want it to run any sequence, so then you have to find workarounds to keep the whole machine running just to have MIDI clock. With a dedicated MIDI clock, you don't have those kinds of conflicts. The dedicated device will send clock exactly when you want without being dependent on any other functions or devices. And that's all I have for troubleshooting MIDI clock. Good luck, and let me know if any of this helped you fix a problem.